gloves are coming off. You believe in miracles? Yes! Unbelievable! We're about to go full court press. Oh, a spectacular move by Michael Short! It's time to play ball. Malone looking for his first hit of the year. Oh. He drives one! Deep left field! That goes up to him. Back near the wall! It's out of here! <laughs> Bartolo has done it! The impossible has happened! Listen in as we tackle everything in the world of sports right now. Stay off the weed. Throw your hat in the ring at 516-572-7440. This is WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. With that, we welcome you to the Friday edition of WHBC Sports Talk. We are on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. And man, the NFL draft was yesterday. And if you're a New York football fan... You're happy. You are happy. (laughs) New York. (laughs) New York football made out, in my opinion at least, very, very well. If you agree or disagree, feel free to call in. 516-572-7440. I'm your host for today, Joshua Yamahi, and joining me today, I have Gina Halstead. What's up, man? And I have Corey David. I'm feeling good today. Yeah, I, I know you are. We, you'll be the voice of Giants fans on today's show, Corey, so <laughs> let's get right into it. We'll start with the Giants. They had pick five and pick seven, and just curious, what were your predictions? Again, we were at Irish Poet yesterday, and we kind of made predictions of how it was going to play out. So who did you have them taking initially? I had them taking Evan Neal. Evan Neal. I had him taking. I had him. T- I had him going. I had him going on the his fifth, right? I had yeah. him going fifth, and I was. I had us hopefully getting Kayvon um, Thibodeau in the seventh. It's crazy how that worked out. Opposite. <laughs> Amazing. Just the fact that you got them both, and every Giants fan I talked to over the course of last night and yesterday, they were saying, you know, Thibodeau and one of those offensive linemen, whether it was Iquanu or Cross, and they got Neal. If it was the combo of those two, and you improve the trenches in that manner, I mean, home run. And it happened. But, you know, I just look at, like, his measurables being six seven. He's a genetic freak as far as he's one of those guys that when you build, when you think of an offensive lineman and yeah. how they're built, he's like the prototypical. And I just feel like coming in, and I don't know what we're necessarily going to do with Saquon this year, but since he's on the roster, we need somebody who can open up those gaps for him. Yeah. So I just think the fact that you need – um, that that run that run that run game they progressed this year, and then you still need protection. And since this is Daniel Jones' last year, probably he, this is his earn it year. Yeah, they He's didn't going, pick up the option, fifty yeah, year option. They did not it. pick up the fifty year option. Basically, what they're tell, what they're basically telling you is, you have a year to earn the starting spot in us. For, give us a reason to pay you. We're going to give you everything that you possibly need. We're going to give you an uh, offensive line. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, build it up. Hopefully they can find weapons in the draft. I'm just saying, Debo's still out there. I hope we can make a trade for him, maybe a second and a future mm. first or something like that. But Debo is still out there. Julio Jones is still out there. That's the that's the main thing, too. If you look at, again, we'll let the draft play out, but you look at all the guys, the free agents, established guys that are still available. Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry, Odell, Tyra Matthew. Uh, Odell. Odell uh. Yeah, because he's hurt. Again, yeah. he probably will be a late pickup like once the season gets underway. But there, there are still really, really good guys out there. So it's going to be interesting to see, especially in the state of New York football. But Again, the draft happens. Wh- what do you do afterwards? You got, guys, I know I said I, I haven't been paying attention <laughs> to a little football lately because, right. you know, it's NBA playoffs. But I read a little bit about it. And you see that they're getting a really good pass rusher in Thibodeau, and they're getting a really good offensive lineman. And you've seen in the Giants past years where that was one of their biggest struggles. Yes, just absolutely. Having, cause you, the last couple of years of Eli's career, he, he didn't have a pocket at offensive line to hold the pocket for more than like three, right. four seconds at yeah. best. So this is a start for our rebuilding for and the our, Giants. And our pass rush last year was abysmal. We couldn't get to the quarterback. I want to say Leonard had his. I want to say Leonard had one of his down years. Yeah. Necessarily. Ojolari was really one of the main bright spots. But that's the thing when you can you you pair him up with Thibodeau. Now you have two premier edge guys coming off the end, and I just see with Thibodeau. He has those intangibles as a as a I'm gonna say outside linebacker, defensive end, edge type guy, right. where he's so explosive and he got the he has the moves. Like I've seen him done, I seen him do 
the long arm. He has the the bend. You know that Von Miller bend when mm-hmm. he could get under the offensive line. He has those special techniques. And he ha- and like they said in the draft last night, he has one of the best first steps in, in oh. out of the into, out of all the prospects. <laughs> His first step, and I was watching Kayvon Thibodeau tape before leading up to the draft, and they showed a little clip when he got picked. That first step is crazy. It's like a generational level first step, get off, get to the quarterback. I mean, the speed rush, the power rush, Thibodeau has it all. But the thing is, the reason why a lot of people say he fell in the draft is because people don't know what was his commitment to the game. And I would just argue, if you look at this season, he got injured in the Ohio State game. If you didn't have that passion, you could have just stayed out and waited for the draft because there were a lot of people that were doing that. But no, he came back, decided to finish the season, and yet he was still impactful in a lot of those games. If you look at the UCLA game, he literally single-handedly took that game over getting either – he was either getting pressure on the quarterback mm-hmm. or he was getting sacks. I just felt like, though, he coming in, you know who he kind of gives that energy vibe to? You remember Jabril Peppers, how he was, like, so energetic, wanted to yeah. take over? I get that vibe from Thibodeau. I absolutely get that vibe from him. And you need guys like that in your locker room. Every NFL team needs a guy that just brings the energy. Because not everybody's like that. Other people, you know, feed off other people's energy. You need a guy that can people can rally behind in that locker room. I look. I know this is gonna sound weird, but I wish we could just like. I just need him to stay injury free until the start of season. Because right. I don't want to be one of those situations where he has a nagging injury at the start of the season. I just want to come in. I want both guys to come in. Clean slate, ready to go. That's all you can hope for with these draft picks, man. I mean, getting out of college, and Thibodeau did have an injury problem last season, and you hope that's kind of, it kind of progresses well heading into training camp and when he gets onto the field. But another take on Kayvon Thibodeau, and you kind of mentioned it, the the attitude concerns, right, and his commitment concerns. I, I was talking to a lot of Giants people, and they believe that Joe Shane, your new GM, was purposely leaking information out. So other teams, the first four teams ahead of the, the Giants, would be scared off so they could get him. Because, like I said, a lot of the draft, whether it's NBA or NFL or anything, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors. And yeah. now the thing that really kind of goes into what you're saying is the fact that you took him fifth. When you could have taken him seventh, you would was, you was just have that notion that if he was still on the board that Carolina could have possibly taken right. him. Because you could have waited, but the fact that you t- decided to take him as early as possible as you could, and then you knew that Carolina was going to get the best offensive tackle. Yeah. One of the best offensive tackles. And he, he, so it left you with Evan M- Neal, probably the guy that you wanted in the first place. So I yeah. felt like everything worked out for the Giants. Everything worked out beautifully for the Giants. I mean, once they saw the first four picks, yeah, it was Walker, Hutchinson, uh, was it Garner 3? Uh, no, 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 no. Stangley was three. Stangley was three, which kind of surprised me. I didn't think he was going to jump up that far in the draft because what that's telling you is you believe he has the possibility of being a shutdown corner. Yeah. I mean, he was a star as a freshman, and the only concerns with him were injuries. Can he stay healthy? But when he's on the field, he's a damn good talent. He has those he, – he, you know, you want a cornerback to have kind of those wide receiver tendencies yeah. where you want them to attack and get the, get after the ball, and you just see that in Stangley. But I was just surprised. I I I I'm no eighty. I know Aiden Hutchinson is happy that he's just staying in Michigan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't get to go that far. And I feel like Dan Campbell is the perfect coach for him. Absolutely. Both high end energy and motive guys, and they love to compete. Dan Campbell is a coach that wants you to compete. If you watched him in, um, I want to say he was one of the coaches in Hard Knocks when they did it a, a while ago. He was a yeah. tight ends coach. He was one of those guys that was high energy. And then even when he was the interim coach, you've seen that guys liked him because he was a players coach. Right, exactly. I mean, the Lions had a great draft, and we'll get into kind of the draft winners and losers and who made out, you know, worse than expected, better than expected. <laughs> yeah. I know we talked pre-show about one team that we have in mind that, what? Huh? What'd you do? Uh, 516-572-7440 if you want to discuss anything, again, regarding the draft. Um, one last thing on, on Thibodeau. Again, just... You, you listen to him speak. You listen to him in interviews. You listen to him, the energy he brought walking up to Roger Goodell. This guy, he has like the perfect temperament for New York City. And you know, one thing is, you got him and you you pair him up with, you got like three L.A. dudes on that on that defensive side. And Devontae Holmes and um, Adoree Jackson and Thibodeau. Yeah. All from Cali and they got that Cali swag. 
They they really do. Both of them. I mean, they. Oh, and Leonard. Leonard's from Cali as well. Yeah. You'll see. You get, New York Giants got the Cali connection going. I mean, hey, the Rams won the Super Bowl, so you might as well have that, you know, same connection going. But <laughs> we just got working at we just got working on the offensive side with weapons as well. Exactly. I mean, I, I think that's what we're probably going to do this today. We're probably going to look into getting receivers, running mm-hmm. backs. I mean, day two, and I said it yesterday, those are where if you have a good front office, which I believe, both New York teams, Joe Shane, Joe Douglas, and the Jets did really well. We're going to get to them in a little bit. I, I trust them. Just as from an objective, like I'm a Saints fan. I'm not a New York football fan. Yeah, made out well, too. We did, we did. A little bit. <laughs> Olave, and uh, we got a nice tackle, so I'm definitely happy about that. But just from an objective perspective, just watching how Joe Douglas has pulled off trades and some of the draft picks he made last year have really panned out well. This year, getting you know Sauce Gardner and um, who am I missing? They got Garrett Wilson. They made out well too. I think you can. You're finally in a spot. If and they got Jermaine. They got Jermaine Johnson. Did they? Yeah, the Jets. They Did got they really. They got Jermaine Johnson. Oh, I, I forgot about that one. <laughs> the Jets made out fantastic. They made like a bandit in the night. <laughs> for real? For real? I mean, why, I, you're finally in a spot. If you're a Giants and Jets fan, you trust this front office. And you trust the moves that they're making. You trust the trades. You trust the free agents. You trust the resignings. And you trust these draft picks. I mean, let's kind of get into the Jets right now. I mean, let's start off with it. The, yeah. the num- what was it? The number, number four? four? Yep, number four and number 10. They picked up Ahmad Gardner at number four. Oh, no, you can't say just Ahmad. You got to say yeah. that. Sauce. In New York, you got to <laughs> sauce now. It's as, literally as, in parentheses right now, sauce too. Sauce I, I Gardner. <laughs> that man's name is Sauce uh, now. Uh, you seen him come up to you seen him come up to the podium, even though he got lost a little bit. Came to the podium. <laughs> he was iced out. He had all he got all that on him. He, well, had, he, he had that drip on him. Corey, you can't have the nickname <laughs> Sauce without, you know. You know, bring it. Being you saucy, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? You know what they say. Sauce lasts longer than juice. So he might, we only know nobody with just a little juice. We need sauce. And we got uh, New York got the sauce in them. Now, yeah. I just feel like, though, with him with him coming up as one of the top corners, I feel like you had to take him off the board, being yeah. that you seen that Stingley came off. And you knew that any of these other teams, if they if he was still on the board, would have possibly taken him. And I just feel like everything that he stacks up, he's 6'2". The yeah. measurables seem absolutely phenomenal as far as... He was one of the cornerbacks that, had, like you said, hasn't given up a touchdown his entire Incredible. college career. That's a, a crazy stat. Something crazy that's stat. something to watch for. I just hope that his game translates towards the NFL because there's been a lot of those guys where they come in overhyped. Uh, just an example, last year, Jeffrey Okuda, yeah. he was one of those guys that thing coming out with him, he's never had a penalty in his entire career at Ohio State. The first thing he does when he gets to the NFL, yeah. he's not picking it up as fast as he wants to. Mm. I just want to... I just want him to come in, be coachable, because I feel like Saul, Saul Robert, Robert Sala. Sala, he's one of those guys, when he was at San Francisco, was relatable as a defensive coach and was able to get guys to buy in. I just feel like what you got drafting a guy like Sauce, he's going to buy, he has to buy in, and that defense has to pick it up because you're building the defense from the ground up. Once you lost Jamal Adams, Marcus May, you lost the backbone of your defense kind of. So you're building it back up. Incredible what the Jets were able to pull off yesterday. I mean, Sauce Gardner, I was saying all the way leading up pre-draft for a month now, if you get Kayvon Thibodeau and Sauce Gardner in New York, it doesn't matter if they go to one team or one goes to each team, both those guys have just the swagger, the game, the personality for New York City. I mean, I was so thrilled that that came to fruition. Welcome home. Welcome (laughs) Welcome home. home. (laughs) Listen to them both talk. They're made for this city. And we talk about guys that, you know, know, they, they think they're, you know, everything and they're all that and they come to New York and then they're humbled because they can't hold, handle some booze or whatever. These guys can handle it. They, they, they're not they scared of it. I'm glad they didn't come in shy. They came in like, I'm that guy. You, That's what sometimes you got to do. You got to mm-hmm. come in like confidence. Like Deion Sanders said, you look good, play good, feel good, they there pay go. good. So <laughs> just coming in, you just got to have that exact confidence, especially to deal with the New York media. You look at guys like Kyrie, KD, they necessarily didn't come in with that confidence. Oh. They came in a little shook, like they thought they had it, but once once that pressure really got to them, they couldn't handle it. As you see on Twitter, as of late, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they uh, we touched on it a little bit yesterday. I mean, Kyrie tweeting about puppets and puppet masters, and you know, KD tweeting and you know, Ben Simmons is like MIA. <laughs> so very interesting times in Brooklyn. We'll we'll say that. But to get back to the Jets. And the topic of what they were going to do with pick 10. Now, a lot of talk was centering around Debo Samuel. We saw a few receivers get traded yesterday. 
And I was surprised Debo Samuel wasn't one of them. We'll go a few, about man, a few receivers. Yeah. A I few mean, receivers. Hollywood Brown, and we'll get to that a little later. Hollywood Brown and A.J. Brown, the teams that they went to. I crazy mean, Brown. <laughs> A.J. Brown, I mean. No, I'm just talking about the last name, both Brown. Be crazy. I mean, hey, what can Brown do for you, right? But the craziest thing is about the fact that uh, I don't know what it is about Ohio State and receivers. I believe they had three drafted. Yep. Wide That's, receiver you, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Hit them at LSU. Ooh, nah, I, nah? Is, wouldn't it be Clemson or Alabama? Al, uh, Alabama, too. Yeah, you got to Yeah, Clemson, too. Because Clemson, you had Sammy Watkins, DeAndre Hopkins. I'm missing somebody, but they had uh, another stud out of there. Alabama, you have Jamison Williams, Julio Jones. Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper, yeah, went to Alabama. Like, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. It's a few wide receiver U's out there. Yeah, so, but the thing is, though, just having those guys pluffer, and then you still have. Guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. coming out. <laughs> Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Crazy. It makes you feel old. <laughs> Randy Moss has a, had a kid, too, at LSU. I don't know where he is now. Uh, I think he was on either Washington or Cincinnati's um, practice squad. But he yeah. he was he was activated, but he got injured. Mm. But just taking a receiver at num- at the number 10 spot, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that they did that. Just because, you, like I said, you had to get weapons. Now, is he the ideal height that I wanted? I wanted a big body type receiver. Yeah, you wanted Drake London for them. I, I did want Drake London. Unfortunately, Atlanta, a couple picks ahead, was able to sneak him away being that big body receiver that I wanted. But I just felt as though uh, with, with everything that's going on, you get a receiver that's great fundamentally. He can run all the routes in the book. Um, so I just think that getting getting Zach Wilson a weapon, that's, all you, that's mostly what you had to do. You yeah. had to... Preparing for a weapon. So what you're doing is you're building your defense and you're adding offensive weapons. That's, you know, one of the points we made yesterday, and I think Dom made this point. The Jets, they're in a position where, again, if they win seven or eight games or nine games even, if that somehow happens, the main point being they're not going to be focused on wins and losses. The main objective for the New York Jets this season, you got to find out who Zach Wilson is. You got to find out if he's that guy. Because this is the year to prove it. I mean, you give him a receiver. You you hope you have Beckton and Fan on the edges. You have a good. You made some good moves on the interior offensive line. I, I, apparently, you've given him everything. He has a receiver now, a good tight end. You have C.J. Uzama from Cincinnati, who just played in the Super Bowl last year. Like, if the Jets, they have to find out. You're gonna leave this situ- leave this year as a Jets fan, knowing Zach Wilson is our guy or he's not that guy. I usually, I use me personally. I usually tend to give the guy to year three because I feel like that first year, okay, you know you're not going to have anything. So it's just whatever, whatever's that year. The right. second year, you want to see development. We're going to actually provide you with weapons. That third year is when I need to see what you have because we've given you everything possible to give you those pieces that you need to succeed, offensive and defensively. Now I just feel like though, Amber Alert, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> But no, I just feel like though you just have to add those pieces that you need, and I feel like the third year is going to be the year that you actually need to see what's going on. Right? Yeah. I mean, I hear you. Again, you want to give them, you know, till year three to proceed, really. But I just say that given how last, I mean, next season's quarterback class is going to look. I mean, you're going to have Bryce Petty, who just won the Heisman, C.J. Stroud, the kid from Miami. You're going to be a really good quarterback. So I feel like if you're the Jets, you either you make a determination. I don't know what you know Jets fans exactly are expecting from Zach Wilson. Jets fans, if you want to chime in, 516-572-7440. As well as Giants fans. Can't Giants leave fans. them out. Can't leave them out, of course. I Listen. New York football fans, once again, you should be very, very hype off yesterday. We was feasting yesterday. Y'all, y'all, y'all really cleaned up. I mean, that was my main impression. Just who, in terms of who won the trade? I mean, who won the draft? <laughs> Jets and Giants, like clearly to me, clearly to me. But the thing is, is this crazy that only one quarterback was selected in the first round? That that is what's really interesting because usually you will see, even if you know pre-draft and during the season, the quarterback crop isn't. It viewed that highly. There's always like one or two guys that just shoot up the boards, right? That didn't happen at all. I mean, pick 20, Kenny Pickett went, only one quarterback was taken. Malik Willis, who I feel bad for. I thought Malik Willis was going to be the guy that went to Pittsburgh, either Pittsburgh or Carolina, Yeah, but he's still out there. I, I, I was, listen, I was shocked that the Steelers didn't take Willis. I thought he, he would have been like a Tomlin guy. You already have Trubisky and Mason Rudolph there. Like, I, I, Kenny Pickett to me seems redundant with those two. I mean, you're going to see what you have in Trubisky. I don't think it's much. 
But, I just hope he doesn't end up in a like a Deshaun Kaiser uh, um, love type situation. Um, yeah. Where it's like you're back up and now you, you're struggling to get those minutes. I feel like he's one of those guys that could step into a starting quarterback role. And I, if I'm the Texans, I'm looking at Malik Willis if he's still on that board. It's the Texans. I mean, some people are saying maybe the Giants. I don't really see it in terms of Malik Willis. But listen, he's a project. He's gotten compared to like Josh Allen in terms of physical tools and arm talent and what he can do running the ball, right? But but then the Jets traded back into the first round and was able to get that kid Jermaine Johnson the second yeah. out of FSU, and I feel like that was a steal in the draft because you seen that he was slipping, and you got you you said I need to still build the defense. We can we can get our offensive guy in Chris and Garrett Wilson. We can get a defensive guy in Sauce Gardner, and then. You know what? Just for the heck of it, let's just get Jermaine Johnson a second mm-hmm. and add that to our defense and get an edge presence because you still have Quentin Williams, you got Quincy Williams, you know the Williams brothers. Yep. <laughs> and you ha- you're building something. You're slowly but surely building something. It's the that was a great great move. Listen, when you have a guy in mind, if you're a front office, and like you said, he was slipping. So what did the Jets do? We're going to go get him. We don't care what we got to give up. We need an edge rusher. We want an edge rusher. We're going to get our edge rusher. And many actually believed he was actually the best um, pro- um, edge rusher in the draft. That Listen, it was there was really no clear-cut top edge rusher guy. I mean, Trayvon Walker and Hutchinson were the favorites. But it was like it was four names. It was names, four guys, it exactly. Was four, it was four names out there. And the fact that you was able to get one of those top four names, hey, Good on you. Now we got to see you actually progress that and see how you develop those guys because yep. you, as much as we want to say about the Jets, we hope that Robert Sala is one of those guys that can develop these guys into be perennial, possibly pro bowlers. Somebody might get defensive or rookie of the year. You want those guys to build those accolades, become superstars in the town. Listen, from what he did in San Francisco, Robert Sala, you know, I have the utmost respect for him in terms of building up that defense. He built up that defense in San Francisco the way it's supposed to be. And from the still, edge, and, and then you go out. And it's still thriving. To it's right it's still driving. I mean, <laughs> San Francisco is an interesting team to watch on day two as well. And again, New York football made out really well. But in terms of like the biggest non-New York winner from last night's draft, who would you have? I'm going Philly. Philly. Philly Philly got Philly got some pieces with Jordan Davis and then you was able to trade in and get that receiver that you need and a guy like AJ Brown. AJ Brown who's I I argue I want to say top 7 in the league right now. I say now. top 7, absolutely. Top 7 in the league right now yeah. and he's one of those guys that as much as people talk about Debo, I mean Debo Samuels, he's one of those guys that can actually do almost everything he can, everything that Debo can, but he's a bigger body. Yeah, he's one of those guys where he can actually play like the running back type receiver roles because every time he catches the ball, once he gets that ball in the hand, he's going for nothing but the yak as far as yards at the catch. You, we, we kind of you made that point yesterday, and I kind of went back at you like in terms of you know Debo, what he can do on the outside. Well, AJ Brown has, I'll give it up to you, has way more experience at the X position, going outside, running routes, catching balls, you know, phasing in the end zone. He was, he's done that all season long he, last year. He with, before even Julio got there, even when Julio was there. AJ was still the number one. Bona fide number one. He was the number one. Lined up on the X at the outside. He could line up inside. He could do it all. Whatever you need, AJ can do. And I just feel like you finally had that receiver. And now you pair him up with Devonta, De- Devonte Smith. Yeah. You have a lethal combination, and then you take a look at their running back, their running game because they were a dominant running team last year. And Nick Sirianni's a good coach in terms of coordinating that running game. The Eagles got a lot of luck going on there, right? especially <laughs> when you get a guy like Jordan Mala- Jordan Malata, yeah. who didn't even play this game a couple years ago, was playing mm-hmm. rugby. Now he's one of the top offensive linemen in the league, yeah. like top 10, top 5 in the league. So I'm just like, you get a lot of luck, and I think that Philly this year is going to make a lot of noise. But what I think they're doing with this is they're surrounding um, Jalen Hurts with a lot of weapons to see if he's that guy, because if he's not – I think what they're going to do is they're going to look in, in that trade market or in the draft next year. You, you, I think you nailed it. I mean, it, we talked about Zach Wilson and the Jets. Well, Jalen Hurts and the Eagles are in a similar position. I mean, he had a good year last year getting that team to the playoffs, but that playoff game was ugly. I mean, he struggled reading Tampa Bay's defense, and you just wonder with a guy who had questions when he was drafted about how much of a thrower is he. It was a lot of games last year that he left on the table, left on the left on the field. Yeah. Where it felt like you, they had a shot to win it and they should have won it, and he just made crucial mistakes down the stretch, especially the game against the Giants uh, early in the season and mid season. 
it was a game that they would expect to win. That game at MetLife, right? Oh uh, yeah, and they yeah. lost it. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's just like he was forcing a lot of things. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what he does with all those weapons. And AJ Brown is going to be great in Philly. I have the utmost confidence in but, him. But, but the thing about that is them getting Jordan Davis. Does anybody notice that they just keep reloading with the defensive it's line? It's ridiculous. <laughs> they, I'm like, I think they're getting Brandon Graham back. This getting Brandon Graham back. They also picked up Fletcher Cox, and they're really yeah. going to make the like running game tough for opponents. Yeah, like, really. Listen, they, the Eagles they have a smart team in terms of how to build a football team. Mm-hmm. A lot like how the Giants built it yesterday, and they're getting back to that. I don't know what Dave Gettleman was doing, but <laughs> he's gone. You don't have to worry about that. Joe Shane's off to a good start, but the Eagles, yeah, they always have good trench play. They can run the ball and they can stop the run. That's all you can ask for from a team. So your eagle, your answer, your answer is Eagles. I'll go with the Lions. We kind of brought that up. They get Hutchinson, hometown guy. He'll be he'll be great with Dan Campbell, like you said. And trading up to get Jamison Williams. Now he's not going to make instant impact, but Jamison Williams is the best receiver in this draft. He didn't go at the top spot because of his ACL injury, but he's the best. Absolutely. But, that, but the, the thing about that, you got to be cautious because he's going. He's not going to be there for the start of season. No, no. He's going to probably be there mid-season. But he falls in line with um, Waddle from last year. He's a speed guy. Yeah. So he's got those guys you can utilize in a lot of different places, whether it be special teams or offense. So it was a good, it was a good pickup. That's what I love most about that kid. I mean, when, when, when my Saints uh, traded up to 11, I was like, Jameson? But you know they took Alave, who's great in his own right. But Jamison can do it all. He can. He was ask, He was asking to do it all. He's like, let me play gunner on special teams. Let me play returner. Let me go outside. Let me play in the slot. Let but me do whatever you need to win the game. I think that's been the key for this first round. If there's a key word, versatility. There's yes. a lot of guys that can do a lot of different things. Whether it be offensive linemen who could switch all across the line, or uh, receivers, receivers who could play X outside, inside, anywhere you need to, it, at special teams. That's the whole thing about this first round was a lot of versatility in it. Who do you have as the biggest loser from yesterday's draft? <laughs> Before I get to the biggest loser, I just want to say one team that had a solid draft, even though I necessarily kind of didn't like it due to the fact that they had a big trade, it was the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. You get, a, you get, one, you get the top-graded center in the draft who's been, who was uh, Pro Football Focus's top-rated center coming out of college ever, mm-hmm. ever. And then you get a guy in um, Kyle Hamilton, who was a prototypical safety as far as he's being 6'4", 220, can run downhill, get, is a big hitter, plus he can make plays in the backfield. I, I think they had one of the solid drafts, and he's just a Ravens draft pick. It's, a, exactly. it's like it's a, it's a Ravens draft. They always pick solid guys up who can always contribute. Typical but, Ravens draft. But don't you think they're looking a little bit thin, though, as far as the wide receiver position? Uh, of course, because they are. You, That's you, a good point. What, you, what it kind of says is you're going to rely on Rashad Bateman, and even then, he's had injury concerns since last year, so you don't know how healthy he's going to be. I mean, hopefully he's going to be healthy coming into the season, but you don't know if his body's going to hold up for a whole season. And I just don't know what else you got besides Jane Prochet, um, I want to say Duvernay. Duvernay's still there, yeah. Duvernay. Uh, I'm just like, Ugh, I feel sorry for Lamar, but the thing is, it's a contract year for him, so both sides are going to be in a tricky situation. Yeah, I mean, listen, one, should... one thing we know about Lamar Jackson, he's fully capable of carrying the freight, you know? Yeah. And he can I really carry he, a team. I just hope he don't have to play like in Madden where you have to run, run him <laughs> like 30 times. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's too happy about um, the Ravens' decisions because you saw what he what he tweeted on Twitter, right? Well, that was smoke. Yeah, that, yeah, that was huh? yeah, but, no, <laughs> yeah, but you have to take that with a grain of salt because that cause I, I would consider that to be smoke and mirrors because for one, the both bo- both the o- Baltimore Ravens organization as well as Hollywood Brown told him prior to this draft that they wanted to trade. That's a good point. Um, Hollywood told him <laughs> this isn't the best fit for me. Um, the Ravens told him that he has requested a trade. So Lamar knew what was going on. I just felt as though he has to put that out to make it seem like, oh, man, I really wish we had him. But, no, he knew everything that's going on. He knows what's going on. As a franchise quarterback, you have to know what's going on. But as for the biggest loser in the draft, I'm going with them Dallas Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? How about them boys? <laughs> we, still, we still them boys? I just want to know out uh, there. Hey, um, it don't look ha- like it. You didn't get a good guy. You didn't get an edge rusher like Jermaine Johnson, who the Jets got. You pick up an offensive tackle in Tyler Smith. I, I get that you lost Collins, Leo Collins, but necessarily were you, are you picking him up to possibly um, 
replace Tyrone Smith in the future? What is what are you trying to do with that offensive line? Because I don't feel like either your def- both your defensive line are taking a hit with y'all guys losing Randy um, Gregory and him going to take the offer in Denver. So I just feel like both sides of the ball in the trenches for the Dallas Cowboys is lacking a little bit. And I just feel like with they making this move, I feel like they could have done something better. But it is what it is, and that's what you have to live with. Hopefully he can contribute, but I don't see that being the best move of this draft. I feel like it was weak. It was, it was that's the perfect word for it. It was just weak. It doesn't really move the needle in any way. I mean, listen, I'm all for the Cowboys being mid this year. So they're going to cry for Sean Payton. They traded some first-round picks. Who would yours be? Biggest loser. Who? I'm going with the Packers. I got to go. That yeah. Is a good yeah. One. I, was, I was thinking if I had a second. Yes, yeah, definitely the Packers. The Packers. They, they had two first round picks and they didn't choose a wide receiver and they're lacking in the wide receiver de- department. How do you have one of the best quarterbacks, arguably of all time, and you don't have it? You don't have anyone to throw to. He's not a runner. When has Aaron Rodgers ever been a well? well early in his career. Yeah, early in his career, he's old now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, he's good, but, but like, get, but you get defensive guys that actually you have one of the top ten defense last year. What you should have been worried about, as far as you should have been worried about the offense. And did you see the report that came out yes today with him being on the Pat McAfee so, show? He said he came back to the Packers with the intention that Devontae Adams was going to be on this team. Well, is he delusional or? Because that was never going to happen. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> he, Aaron Rodgers knows better than that. No cap space. We could say it's real or they, fake or whatever. No, they offered him the same contract that he had with the Raiders. That is a good point. So it was up to Devontae Adams and he wanted to leave. Obviously. But, you know, uh, Rodgers, I think that whole situation, he just wanted his money and it was really mishandled. Uh, so, but, yeah, the Packers are definitely – I mean, their defense is going to be nasty. But again, offensively, yeah. you're yeah. not helping out your quarterback. Yeah. We're gonna need somebody to step up. You still have Rash- you have Rashad Gary, and you have Smith coming still back. Yeah. And I, I feel like with you have a guy like Devontae Wyatt coming in, he secures that he secures that middle for you. And then in the end, you still have a backup in um, Quay Walker. I'm not sure what they're gonna use him as an outside or inside. I would say, oh, hmm, maybe Mike linebacker middle, I'll play kind of both. Mike and Will are like alternate towards. But um yeah, the Packers eh, crazy. You know you know what's so ironic about the Baltimore Ravens though? Yeah. Is the pick that they traded with Buffalo t- with the twenty third to trade to get to the twenty fifth because they traded back. Right. Uh Kiera w- Elam was uh picked. And as anybody who knows the history with the Elam family, uh Kiera's uncle is the biggest it would arguably be one of the biggest busts in Ravens history. <sighs> Yeah, when you when your daddy a bust, I don't, I don't no, no, know. It's his, it's his uncle. His dad. Oh, his uncle. Okay. His dad actually played in the, in the league, and he was on, I believe, the Browns and the Cowboys. He actually had a solid career, well, unlike his brother. Interesting to <laughs> <laughs> interesting to see how that plays out. Just to close on the NFL draft talk, my New Orleans Saints. I was praying, crying, begging, pleading, all that for a wide receiver, and we got out of one of their wide receiver use, Chris Olave. So Michael Thomas isn't going to be left alone out there. Jameis Winston has a little something to work with. And then you get Trev- you get Trevor Penning. Trevor Penning. I mean, he he's got to clean up the penalties, but he you you watch his combine tape. I mean, he's a freak of nature. Just the four, forty yard dash, the agility. He can really get after it. So I'm really happy with the Saints draft. And for all our teams, we'll see how they do on day two and day three. Uh, do you think the Do you think the Saints have enough to make it to the end, uh, make it deep in the playoffs? We still have, you know, a good core. I love our defense, and I'll see. I'll see if we make a move on like a defensive tackle tonight. Listen, I, everybody loves the Buccaneers. I know everybody loves Tom Brady and what they've built, but let's not forget they may have won the division last year, but they ain't beat us. They did not beat us. They did not beat us. Hey, don't forget that elite tight end that y'all got coming back. Jason Hill. Uh, <laughs> well, that the good thing about that, I I won't have to see that man play quarterback anymore. Our head, but, our new head coach said enough with that. I hope I hope that he's not just playing tight end. I hope he's still going to be all over the field as far as yeah. running back, receiver. Just move him everywhere. He everywhere be, but quarterback. He should be <laughs> you no know, on certain plays. I wouldn't mind him. Like a wildcat. Up. Yeah. Just don't have him throw the ball, please. I'm because this, because let's, <laughs> let's not let's not <laughs> act like Drew Brees' last year, the last game he played. Taysom Hill should have finished that game. You're Taysom, not, Taysom Hill was that. doing some damage that. in that game against the Vikings. If, for anything that you say about Taysom Hill, that was his game. He should have stayed in. That that you got a good point. Drew Brees had the the big time noodle arm heading into the twilight of his career. 
But hey, day two, day three of the NFL draft. We'll see how it goes. I want to take this time before we transition to basketball. You are listening to WHBC Sports Talk. We are on the voice of Nassau Community College. 90.3 WHPC. Joshua Yamahi hanging out with you with Gina Halstead and Corey David. Yeah. The NBA playoffs. Ooh. All the draft talk. We had yeah. three game sixes yesterday. Man. And all of them were series clinching games. And I want to start with, let's see, Mavs and Jazz. Mavs eked out a, a two-point win in Utah yesterday. They win the series 4-2. I expected them to win. I I expected the Jazz to put up to a fight, but I mm. definitely did see the Mavs advancing in that series. Do you guys think this is the end of the Utah Jazz as we know them? I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> you go first, Gina. I don't know. I haven't. Been, I, Utah Jazz is not one of the teams that I um, follow up on. I know Donovan Mitchell, of course. I know Rudy Gobert. He's probably didn't. Is he going to win Defensive Player of the no, Year? No, went to right? Marcus Smart. Good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Kind of Rudy Gobert stuff, but uh, Corey, what do you think? I actually have a big take about this game because I, w- I was watching the <laughs> ending. I was watching the ending, and I watched the most of it. Co- Mike Conley made the biggest bonehead decisions coming down the stretch. Uh, it was a play where he just random. I know they were down three, but they random. He randomly jacks up a three. You still had time remaining. That creates an extra possession. You still had time on the clock, and they actually had a chance to make a uh, comeback and win the game. But instead, he has a costly turnover while traveling, while trying to make something happen. You didn't get the ball in in that last minute. They didn't get the ball into Donovan Mitchell's hands not once. And that's so, that's a sorry excuse not to have your star player with the ball in his hand in the final minute. Live a, you ha, at that situation, you have to live and die with um, whatever Donovan Mitchell is going to make. Don, I feel like Mike Conley kind of cost this team a chance to go to another game. That's the mm-hmm. thing with Utah. I mean, they signed Mike Conley, I want to say, three, four years ago, and you're expecting him. You know, he was coming out of Memphis at that time. Okay, this is a solid former all-star point guard. No, he okay. didn't make an all-star. This is first year. Really? I mean, I mean, he's always been a good six-man, right? Either, either, it was his first year this year or last year, but that was his first year. Yeah. So fr- a fringe all-star. A but fringe. You signed them to this big contract, and you're looking to take the next step. And it, it didn't really work out. I mean, Utah is in a position now. They've made us to the playoffs, I want to say, five straight seasons with limited success. So, listen, I think they're in a real tough position. And I, I think they're going to have to make some decisions on Donovan Mitchell and breaking up that tag team with Rudy Gobert because I don't really see it going much further than this. I mean, if Donovan Mitchell was to happen to leave, just hypothetically, <laughs> and there was a team, I don't know, maybe his hometown yeah. of New Come York. home, please. <laughs> please. Listen, I, I've, I've said Donovan Mitchell, he will definitely look at his options this offseason, right? And mm-hmm. the Knicks, who have you know, so many young assets and young talent, they're going to be looking to kind of make a move here. But they're at a crossroads. But now, hypothetically, if he was, if Donovan Mitchell was the one that has to stay, and they got rid of Rudy Gobert, I would say the perfect team for him would be to go to Charlotte. Gobert. They need, ah, yeah. they need a, I like that. They need a. They need a defensive. They need a defensive-minded uh, center because if you look at Mason Plumlee last year. He anybody any center they played against <laughs> was just going to get scored. They was going to get scored on. Yeah. They could do whatever they want. I remember seeing. Um, I I remember seeing what is his name from uh, Atlanta, Capella. John, uh, Capella. Capella had looked like an all star against Mason Plumlee last year. Yeah, that so, should never happen. But Capella. I just feel like that team has to blow up because you. It's been a friend. It's been on the fringe for the longest, and I feel like you have to finally do something with that. I mm. think I don't see Quince, I don't see Quinn Steiner coming back. I think, listen, it's a bold prediction, but I don't think Donovan Mitchell, Gobert, or Snyder are back with the Utah Jazz next season. I think it's time to break it up. They all got to go their separate ways. Blow it up. Rebuild. Blow it up. <laughs> Blow it up. It, the West is too good to keep going at this, right? You're going to have the Warriors. The Grizzlies are going to get better and better. Minnesota, too. You're going to have Phoenix hanging around. Like, But you don't want But you don't, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're the— Sacramento Kings of the West as well. Uh, no, you're right. Listen. So you have to keep some star power. Like, I would do what the, as much as I would want Donovan Mitchell to come to New York, I would do a situation probably like how Portland is doing it, where they kind of blew it up with um, Dame, but they still managed to keep him as an integral part. So what you're doing is you're building around him. I feel like you need to get new pieces and just build around Donovan, Dave, Donovan Mitchell. That's a good yeah. point. I mean, listen, it's time to rebuild. We'll see what kind of route they take between a complete blow-up or just, you know, a little tweak. 
But hey, the Mavericks move on. Luca looks healthy. Jalen Brunson had a great series, and he's another guy on like the radar for New York too. And they're oh. they're gonna go against the Suns though. That's gonna be a phenomenal series. I I call them. Mm, I think they're gonna get swept. Not gonna lie to you. Yeah, the I'm Mavs. calling it. The, Ooh, the Suns. Wow. They're gonna get swept. Ooh. The hot Suns are gonna get swept. Hot take alert. Hot take yeah, alert. Yeah, it's a hot take alert. I think the Suns are gonna sweep the Mavs. Wow. I think the Suns are gonna sweep the Mavs. I do. I don't know why. I'm not 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 to discredit the Mav the Mavericks, but no. I think they're gonna get swept. You don't got faith in Luka Magic? <laughs> <laughs> not against the Suns. Come on, out of the number one seed. Yeah, Come on. You can't man. I, I don't think, Chris I don't, Paul, did you just see the game that man had? I can't wait to get to that. Too. Oh my goodness. I did. Would you see the game you had before? Four points. <laughs> 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 that's why hey, that's why you got Booker. Don't don't big up nothing and then forget about how he was playing before. But I just feel like with Luke, with Luca coming out of this game, it makes it builds more on his legacy as being one of the fate, the bright futures of the league. And as I said, I think he, he's him and Giannis surviving for that spot on who's going to be the face of the league once LeBron, uh, KD retires. I think a dark horse in that conversation is kind of Jason Tatum right now. Maybe Jason, you got to look at him two way star. Jason Tatum is like phenomenal. I want to say how would I describe? He's a guy that is like. He has reservations to the superstar room, but he's still not still quite got, there. Still got work to do. Still has a lot of work to do. But hey, if he beats the Bucks, I mean, listen, yeah, it's time to hit, see them at that table for sure. Um, what do you? How do you think that series is going to go? The Bucks are playing the Celtics in the next series. I don't. I go four two Bucks. I think the Celtics will put up a great. I don't know. I see their game plan should definitely be to try to. They can't guard Giannis. I don't think there's anybody in the league that can really say that you can guard Giannis. So I feel like the Celtics continue that d- defensive possessions that they've had previously with the Nets. They can lock down every other person, just let Giannis get his two little points. And then you see the all the offense that they have. Like they they're they they're a shooting team. Yeah. They can play in the paint, they're a shooting team. So basically I think the Celtics in order to advance to the next series should look to play a three two ball. Give up the two for the three. Right, listen, that that series, I have that going seven games. Games, nah, I don't, I don't see. I see it going game six. You but. know how I feel about Giannis, but yeah. what the Celtics did, and here's where I give the Bucks the edge. They KD, they the, what the Celtics did to KD was you know really impressive. But Kevin Durant Ooh. was bailing them out with a lot of bad mid range jumpers. Giannis isn't going to mess around. He's going to go straight to the cup time after time after mm-hmm. time. So again. Robert Williams and Horford are going to have to be really present in that series for them to have a chance. And there's no Chris Middleton for the entire series. So that's a huge, uh, huge loss. But I, this is Giannis Antetokounmpo we're talking about. This is no, a guy that but Chris, you, no, Chris Middleton is a, a very essential piece it's to a, that team. It's a huge loss. Team. I mean, I think yesterday I said Celtics, so I'm like flip-flopping here. I'm mm-hmm. going to keep flip-flopping because it's so close in my it mind. It is. I, did, I, I, I thought long and hard about that series if we talk about that one. Yeah. And I'm going with the Celtics just because I feel like they have what a lot of teams don't. They have a lot of bodies and a lot of length that they can throw at Giannis. Yes. As far as Jason Tatum and J- Jalen Brown both being six, 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 seven. Uh, you have you still have Robert Williams the third and then you still have um, Al Horford. You just have bodies and bodies that you could throw at um, White Devin White that you could um, that you could throw at him. Yeah. You just have bodies you could throw and you know that Marcus Smart is just going to be a little pest out there, just slowly trying to look for steals, trying to look anywhere to disrupt them. And what you can do is what a lot of people do is build that wall to keep Giannis out because people forget that Giannis had a Good year last year, one of his best. But people don't forget that year before they were eliminated from the, from the playoffs by the Miami Heat. So it is possible if you just play defense, because that's what Miami is built on defense. And I just feel like you have to focus a game plan on him, because I don't feel like Drew Holiday is one of those guy, point guards that can lead you with it. He's a good defensive guard, but he's not a good offensive guard. So I feel like you actually have a shot at winning this, and I think the Celtics are going to pull us off. I got this going to a game six. Okay, so you you're going what four two Celtics? Yeah, uh, listen, Ooh, it's, it's okay. definitely for how many games it's going to go. It's definitely going to be probably the most entertaining series. I mean, no, I, I, I've I, already I, seen the most entertaining, and yeah. that's the Timberwolves and the Grizzlies. You, you oh, want to get right into that? Oh, don't forget, <laughs> we got to talk about the most electric fire man in sports entertainment, Ja Morant. That d- let me tell you something, man. Oh my goodness, that dunk! I think it was in late in the third quarter. Just electrifying. The, the hops <laughs> to attempt to have it in your mind to attempt that to try it 
and then convert it. I don't know, what's Malik Beasley doing? He, no, he's tried that dunk multiple times. Yeah, Kevin Love even almost said, like, he almost did that same exact dunk to yeah. Kevin Love. And he said, it was almost in that moment, I see my career flash, and I thought I was going to retire <laughs> after this game. <laughs> he's like, I'm glad he missed that. Because yeah. that was what he's been known for, trying that dunk, but missing it. Yeah, and he pulled it off in the biggest game of his season. Man. I don't even know what to say, but I want that posterized dunk on a poster. That's, I want it. That's one thing I wanted to say, too. Say that dunk happens in, like, the 90s. That poster is on my wall as a kid, your wall as a kid. Everyone's, but, everyone's wall is going to have that poster but I, I want to give credit to the Timber, uh, Timberwolves because they've been fighting, and I feel like this They're game— They're gritty, yeah. I feel like this is going to go to Game 7 because they actually have more— I, I feel like they have more talent than the than the Grizzlies because they have, a, like— Former All Stars mm. and D'Angelo Russell and Cat, but I just feel like sometimes Cat, you don't know if he's gonna be hit or miss. You never know what type of game he's gonna have. Now Anthony Edwards, I feel like he's going to be one of those guys that's gonna be a potential like superstar because he has that. Yep. I want to win it because people don't realize the game in Memphis the other day. It literally went down to the wire. If Ja doesn't pull out a couple of fouls where he where he gets fouled and converts his free throws, because I think he was nine of ten in free, shooting free throws, mm. if he doesn't do that, the 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 Grizzlies don't have a shot. And you've seen that um, Edwards hit that final three, and then Ja Morant was able to come back and hit a three. Ja Morant is not a three point guy, but he was able to convert something there. So I just feel like it's going to be one of those gritty type of games. But I do want to point out one like you. The thing about this series is it's, a it's whole, hard. It, it's so many funny things that's happened outside of the series. <laughs> yeah. You got pro, you got protesters uh, coming up on the floor trying to glue their hands, tie themselves to hoops. By the way, did you see that security guard that took her down? He was. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Give him an invite to the NFL draft. Why not? <laughs> yeah, like, he, read, he read the play from start to finish. He was waiting. Like He's seen. He's like, I know you're going to do this. I'm surprised. As soon as he took <laughs> off, he was like, he put a, he put, I want to say it was a 4 5 40. Absolutely. <laughs> the, the burst of. We talk about Kayvon Thibodeau's first step. Explosive. <laughs> but then also. The dad, John ja Moran's dad, and mean, Anthony uh, Edwards' dad's mean, just going at it. No, it, that's Carl Anthony Towns' dad. Car, that's Carl Anthony Towns' dad? Yeah. I thought it was Anthony Edwards' no, dad. Look, the whole they're time. going back and forth. You got Usher showing up because uh, John ja Morant's look, dad looked like him. <laughs> Literally. That's crazy. But the thing is, with, with everything that's going on like with this with the series, it's just crazy how. These two teams mesh so well to give you that great series. Like, you knew that as soon as um, the Timberwolves advanced, that she was going to hear a lot of those chirping. Like, <clears throat> John Morant is one of those guys that's not going to back down from anything. So when you see a guy like Patrick Beverly giving you the you two short side, he going to come right back and do something and say, you two short as well. Yeah, It's like that clip from, you ever watched the, the Dream Team? Where it's like, Magic was like, Carmelo, Carmelo dunked on Chuck, uh, on Charles Barkley. He said, Magic Johnson be like, you got to go back and get him. And it's just like one of those situations <laughs> yeah. where it's like, it's so competitive and uh, you just love to see it. These are just two young, scrappy teams going at it. And listen, Minnesota should have won this series already. I mean, the amount of double digit leads that Minnesota, won, see, I don't know. That's that's the hard part, what, determining who's going to pull it out. I already called it before. I feel like a lot of us called it before we the games even started. All three this of us seri- sure. Yes, this series was going to a game seven. And I've been swapping. This is the one series where I'm like, I don't know who can take it. Because I feel like both teams have that capability but to do so. If it goes to Game 7, it's anybody's, anybody's game. It's the, anybody's the game. The funniest thing is, I don't know if anybody's caught this, but has anybody seen that Carl Anthony Town has been faking his voice? <laughs> like he's, been, he's been purposely trying to trying make, to make it voice. deeper? Yes. Yeah. He sounds, you know, he sounds like a teenager, like a professor teenager just coming out of puberty because he talks so oh soft. And everybody's been saying, is he purposely trying to make his voice sound harder? I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> the job isn't done. The jo-. I'm like, that ain't how you talk. That ain't how you talk. That's not how you talk. That, that, was, that was funny. You I, catfishing I, his voice? <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> I saw the clip of that, the post-game interview where he's talking like Kobe Bryant. He's like, yeah, we, the job's not finished. I'm like, that's not you. You're not that guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I say all the time on the show, Carl Anthony Towns is not from Newark. He's from Piscataway. <laughs> But let's remember that. Let's let's just remember that. Right? He, he, he's that, not, you know. But that's an, that's an inter- that's an entertaining series, as yeah. well as the Suns versus the Pel- Pelicans was one. You seen? I felt like the Pelicans is one of those teams that 
if Zion would have played, I think it would have been a different series. That That's a fact. I mean, the amount of fight that they showed, I'm so proud of the Pelicans. And New Orleans, you know, I'm a Saints fan, so I will always pull for the Pelicans, like a part of me. You have <laughs> Willie Green as a phenomenal coach. You, you got see- Brandon Ingram taking that next step. Jose Alvarado, the light skinned Pat Bev. <laughs> <laughs> the light skinned uh, Pat Bev. They, uh, Patrick Beverly and Marcus Smart was opening the doors for him to say, You are the new pest of the league. Yes. And I, you barely see those guys, but they you don't those are the guys that you would much rather have on your team than the face. But think about Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram played how you would want Kevin Durant to play the series in the in, in the net series. But attack mode, and then you see that Willie Green after the series is over, he's crying. That just showed me how much the coach wanted to win, like how much he believed in his team. And then I think it was today that Zion, somebody asked Zion, "Will you be signing your extension?" He said, "I couldn't sign it faster." Now, I, I hopefully he's one of those guys that sticks to his word. But in yeah. the game of basketball, it's a business, so you never know what happens. Mm-hmm. Listen, at this point, if Zion, like I want to Zion on the Knicks for the longest, but if he does not sign that five-year, like two hundred million dollar extension to stay with that group, what they're building in New Orleans, then he's just a dummy. Because where, he, where else is he going to get that? You're ac- you're injury prone. This is a team that's shown you you that they want you in the city. I, I may have been, I may have been in the minority here, but why did I feel like the situation with Zion was he wanted to play, but the team wasn't allowing him to play? And I feel as though it's the exact opposite of a guy in Brooklyn who didn't show up, didn't yeah. want to go in. You know, he has he has. His back was hurting. He 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 woke up on the wrong side of the bed. He woke up with some back soreness. The cat the dog ate his homework too. Apparently, he been MIA too lately. Yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about Ben. I can't play a game. Simmons. Right, listen, he, the Nets for all again. I'll say it again. I just, told y'all the 76ers won that trade. <laughs> and hey, why don't we go there next? I mean, the Nets, I mean, KD, Kyrie, Ben Simmons. Swept. If, you, if they play, Swept, if man. they play, they're a good team. But is there any guarantee that they will? No. They just have so many factors going into them. that The chemistry, everything that's happened off of the court, just, I don't know. Uh, can, we talk about, can we talk about how Doc Rivers saved his legacy for yes, one series? Yes, he did. Because if, he would have got, if they would have lost that game last night, we would have, had, we would have been talking about is Doc Rivers the coach to lead Joel Embiid into uh, to lead him to a championship? Mm-hmm. Remember how la- last year they asked Doc Rivers, "Is Ben Simmons somebody you can win a championship with?" They would have been having to ask that question it, to Joel. Is Doc Rivers a coach you can win a championship <laughs> with? I Listen, hope he would be honest. You you saw how charged up I was. Maybe Doc Rivers listened to WHPC Sports Talk yesterday because I was like, "Yo, the pressure's on you now." You got a young Raptors team that doesn't know any better. You got James Harden, who has many playoff stinkers on his resume. You got Drake on the sideline chanting. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of pressure going into not- last night's game. And I don't know how much credit to give them because the Sixers are clearly the better team. They should have never lost two straight games but after I f- going I up felt, the game. I felt like, yeah. but, I'm not too sure if you watched the like, game, but I felt like James Harden was getting his confidence back as far as you see him do his little dribble, dribble, three point shot, and he, he, to- he started talking. I feel mm. like he's been shy most of the series where he hasn't been talking as much. He's been more complaining to the refs, trying to get calls. But I felt like at this game, he let his game, he let his, he's let his talent take over. He really mm-hmm. did. He let I his mean, game do the talking. He, he shot the ball well. He had 15 assists yesterday. <laughs> from James, James Harden. Harden. Yeah. 15 assists. That's what he they, passing the ball now, y'all. That's what they need from him. I mean, Ben Simmons could pass the ball, but he wasn't shooting. If you can get couldn't shoot to save his life. Didn't even try to shoot. <laughs> so if you can get that F type of effort from James Harden in big games, that's why I'm so hard on the Sixers. Like you have the coach. You have Embiid, Harden, you have this kid Tyrese Maxey who's a, a fe- very yeah, he's gonna star. be a future star. I give it two years tops. And they're they're gonna play Miami next, so we'll see how that plays out. I got it's Miami. Tough I got Miami winning that series. I got, I got I got Miami too. I got Miami four two. Game six, yeah. Four two. Jimmy Jimmy is not going to be that guy to play with. Can, nobody talks about the Heat though. Like they, they were the number one seed coming in Eastern Conference. Yeah. They are literally the t- silent but deadly team. You know why they don't talk about them? Simply because they don't have a standout star. Every person on their team is good. We have Jimmy Butler. He's an all star. Yeah. You have Tyler Hero. He he had the big expectation coming in with his career. Six man. He was, he looked like he could have been a six man of the year type of situation this year. Yes, you have you have some veterans that have passed their prime. Granted, but you have a very very good team all around, bench and lineup. Any final thoughts in the NBA playoffs here? 
as we close out? Uh, it's hard. <laughs> I feel like I, I'm. I don't know how many people share this opinion, but the Warriors are winning it this year. Mm. I agree with Corey. I, I think you, we're getting, I think we're getting the Warriors in the finals. They're going to take down the Grizzlies. They're going to take down Phoenix. They're not taking down Phoenix. I'm yeah, going no. I'm going back what, to back. When was the last time CP3 beat Steph? Mm. I don't mm. know. And Booker's not. He didn't look too look, good yesterday. Look, and they don't like they don't like the offense that the, the the Warriors run with. It's a bunch of screen actions and a guy just, and a guy just running around because who's their got best defenders? Uh, Malik Malik uh, Bridges, Mikael Bridges, Bridges, Mikael Bridges, and Jay Crowder. Those guys are going to be running for their lives because Steph Curry is going to be running miles. And then let's not forget about Jordan Pool Party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the Warriors have a great thing going, and I'm officially going to flip flop Warriors Celtics finals. Ooh, um, I got. I have. Bucket. I have to keep mine. I'm going Bucks Suns, and that could still very well happen. And Bucks and seven, Bucks and seven. Yeah, I got to stick with it. I don't know. It's really hard to tell y'all. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful time in sports right now. We'll see how the NBA playoffs progresses. Day two and day three of the NFL draft coming up this weekend. But for now on WHBC Sports Talk, we will call it a day and we will call it a week. So from Gina Housed and Corey David, I am Joshua Yamahi saying thank you for listening to WHBC Sports Talk on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. And we will see you back here on Monday. Have a great weekend.